In the last video, we looked at specialized animal cells. Now in this video, we're going to look at three specialized plant cells. That being the root hair cell, the phloem, and the xylem cell. Now let's first look at this root hair cell. One thing I want to point out is to make sure you always include the word hair in the name, okay? Don't just say root cell. Some of my students say that and in the mark scheme they sometimes emphasize you have to say hair. So root hair cell. Now just like with the animal cells, the structure is related to the function. And root hair cells are adapted to absorb things, alright? Clock how it looks slightly different from a regular plant cell. This plant cell is sometimes called a palisade cell. More on that in a future video. One of the differences between a root hair cell and a palisade cell is the large surface area to absorb water and minerals. Another difference is that you don't have chloroplast and if you think about it, the roots of plants aren't usually green and for a good reason, there's no sunlight there, it's obscured by the soil. So it'll be a waste of resources to make some chloroplast there. The permanent vacuole in the root hair cell also helps to speed up the movement of water via osmosis. Notice also you've got bare mitochondria. This is to provide the energy to absorb nutrients via active transport. We'll cover the fusion, active transport and osmosis in a future video. The next specialized plant cell we're going to look at are xylem cells. Notice how the XY is pronounced like Z, so xylem cell. And once again, the structure is related to the function. And the function of these xylem cells is to carry water and minerals from the roots to the rest of the plant above. Fun fact here, the root word, no pun intended, of xylem comes from the Greek word for wood. We've got two main adaptations here. The first are these hollow xylem tubes. These used to be regular plant cells but died and hollowed out so that the water and minerals can easily move through them. Now as the water moves through these xylem tubes, a lot of water pressure can build up. So the next adaptation are these rings of lignin which make the xylem strong enough to withstand the pressure. And finally, the last plant cell structure we're going to look at that specialised is the phloem. And again, not for the last time, the structure is related to the function. And the function of the phloem is to transport dissolved food around the plant, not just up, but up, down, side to side. Fun fact again, the root word for phloem actually comes from the Greek word for bark. No, my G, not that type, this type. The first striking adaptation are these sieve plates. It's essentially the cell wall but with holes inside them. This helps to direct the dissolved food to where it's needed. Unlike xylem, the phloem cells are not dead but they're heavily murked. Therefore, to stay alive, they have a special type of life support called the companion cells. These companion cells have a lot of mitochondria inside them. And you probably guessed this, so what they do is that they share some of their energy with the phloem. This energy can therefore be used to move the dissolved food up and down the phloem vessels using active transport. To summarize, we looked at root hair cells, xylem cells and phloem cells. If you're still baffed, you watch the video but if you're cool to move on, check the description for some corresponding worksheets and also for the answers to the previous worksheet. And if you like what you saw, then like what you saw. Peace.